Nietzsche's Human All Too Human is a book that explores the human condition and our tendency to make assumptions about the world and ourselves. Nietzsche argues that humans often fall into the trap of seeing themselves and the world in a certain way, without ever questioning the validity of these assumptions. He believes that this leads to a lack of self-awareness and a lack of understanding of the world around us. Nietzsche thinks that we have a tendency to project their own beliefs and desires onto the world, rather than seeing it as it truly is. This can lead to a distorted view of reality, where we see things that are not actually there. Nietzsche also argues that humans have a tendency to see the world in terms of good and evil, rather than accepting that it is a neutral and impersonal place. Nietzsche presents an argument in his book that humans have a tendency to create moral and belief systems based on our own desires and needs, rather than an objective understanding of reality. This, Nietzsche claims, leads to a lack of freedom as we are constrained by these systems and unable to see the world from different perspectives. Additionally, Nietzsche addresses the concept of knowledge and how it is often used to justify our prejudices and desires. He argues that knowledge is often used to justify our own biases and beliefs, rather than as a means to understand the world. Nietzsche contends that true understanding comes from challenging our own convictions and assumptions, and seeing the world from a new and unique perspective. Nietzsche, in his work, offers a critique of traditional morality and religion, maintaining that they are nothing more than human constructs designed to justify certain beliefs and actions. However, one could argue that there exist universal moral principles that aren't simply human constructs, but rather are based on reason and compassion. These principles, such as the golden rule or the principle of non-harm, aren't arbitrary or subjective, but rather grounded in human nature and the nature of the world. Furthermore, it could be argued that religion serves a crucial function in providing a sense of community, purpose, and spiritual fulfillment for many people. While Nietzsche's ideas may be intellectually stimulating, they do not necessarily invalidate the value of traditional morality and religion. Some might say that Nietzsche's worldview is overly cynical and nihilistic. Critics argue that his portrayal of humanity as nothing more than a cluster of selfish and shallow desires is overly negative and doesn't take into account the brighter sides of human nature. On the flip side, many consider Nietzsche's ideas inhuman, all too human to be incredibly insightful and thought-provoking. Nietzsche's emphasis on self-awareness and self-overcoming is viewed as a valuable addition to our understanding of human nature. His call for individuals to transcend their base desires and strive for something greater is perceived as a powerful and motivating message. Additionally, Nietzsche's examination of religion, morality, and traditional values is considered a vital and pertinent viewpoint in contemporary society. His rejection of conventional morality and call for individuals to establish their own values is perceived as a liberating and empowering message. Furthermore, his critique of religion as a tool for control and oppression is deemed a valuable insight into the function of religion in society. These are all compelling critiques. Nietzsche's philosophy poses a conundrum if we accept that life is meaningless, as he argues, then what is the point of striving for something better or creating our own values? This question has puzzled many who have encountered his ideas. On the one hand, life can be said to have meaning and significance, regardless of the nature of our existence or whether an ultimate purpose exists. Meaning is imposed on us through our relationships with others, and it is not something to be discovered somewhere else. On the other hand, when meaning is dependent on finite and imperfect beings such as ourselves and an ultimately condemned universe, then principles such as justice, fairness, morality, and love appear to be in vain, being nothing more than the result of naturalistic processes and the blind, pitiless, and different movement of atoms. This conundrum is the ultimate challenge posed by Nietzsche's philosophy. How can one find meaning and purpose in a meaningless world? It is a question that requires deep reflection and a personal journey to find an answer. Here are four notable quotes from the book. In reality, hope is the worst of all evils, because it prolongs man's torments. Here, Nietzsche argues that hope is a negative force in the lives of human beings. He suggests that hope prolongs one's suffering by keeping individuals clinging to something that may never come to fruition. 
Nietzsche's perspective on hope is rooted in his philosophy of the eternal recurrence, which posits that all events in the universe repeat themselves infinitely. In this worldview, hope is seen as a futile endeavor, as it is based on the belief that things will change for the better in the future. But, according to Nietzsche, the future is predetermined and unchangeable, so there is no point in hoping for something different. Nietzsche also believed that hope can lead to disappointment and despair when it is not fulfilled. When an individual places their hope in something and it does not come to fruition, they are left feeling let down and possibly even more hopeless than before. Furthermore, Nietzsche argues that hope can be a form of escapism, allowing individuals to avoid dealing with the present reality and their current problems. Instead of facing their struggles head-on, they may choose to hold on to hope as a means of avoiding their problems and their suffering. No one dies of fatal truths nowadays, there are too many antidotes. One interpretation of this quote is that Nietzsche is critical of the way that people in modern society use distractions and diversions to avoid dealing with difficult truths. This could include things like entertainment, social media, or drugs and alcohol. These distractions provide a temporary escape from reality, but ultimately do not address the underlying issues. Another interpretation is that Nietzsche is referring to the proliferation of ideologies and belief systems that offer easy answers to complex problems rather than facing the harsh realities of life. This could include religious or political ideologies that promise salvation or utopia, but ultimately do not deliver on those promises. Nietzsche's quote could also be interpreted as a comment on the way that people in modern society have become desensitized to difficult truths. With the constant bombardment of information and the ease of access to information, people are exposed to a wide variety of information, some of which are difficult to accept, but they have become accustomed to it to the point where it doesn't affect them in a deep way. Do you deserve truth? You sure seek it, but do you deserve it? If you want to see real things burning, you first have to reach up to the height of the fire. In this quote, Friedrich Nietzsche is questioning the value and merit of seeking truth. He implies that simply wanting to know the truth is not enough and that one must first prove themselves worthy of it by demonstrating the courage and determination to reach the heights where the truth burns. In other words, truth is not something that comes naturally or easily. One must suffer greatly in order to reach it. But it is also true that truth has the potential to destroy you, like fire. Not joy but joylessness is the mother of debauchery. Think of the ways in which people often drink, not because they are joyful, but because they have nothing to be joyful about. Alcohol and drugs become an escape from finding true meaning and happiness. But ultimately, these behaviors lead to a cycle of self-destructive behavior that become very difficult to overcome. Error has transformed animals into men. Is truth perhaps capable of changing man back into an animal? Nietzsche thinks that people have become so detached from nature by blindly following social and cultural norms. He suggests that these norms have suppressed man's natural instincts and thus disconnecting man from their true nature. We have discovered, through error, through wars and conflict, that our animal civic natures are destructive and most be reined in for the benefit of the human race. At the same time, Nietzsche believes that these self-corrective behaviors are ultimately based on social fictions. If one seeks the truth, they may discover that they are at root, animals, and knowing this can be liberating. 